Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at Rudolf Steiner's first book, GA1, that is translated as Goethe and Science, basically his essays uh, that were woven throughout Goethe's collected works on science. What does Steiner say here? He says, Goethe found the essential being of the organism. One can easily fail to recognize this if one demands that the typus, that self-constituted principle, entelechy, itself be explained by something else. But this is an unfounded demand because the typist, the typus held fast in its intuitive form explains itself. For anyone who's ever grasped that forming of itself in accordance with itself of the entelechical principle, this constitutes the solution of the riddle of life. Any other solution is impossible because this solution is the essential being of the thing itself. If Darwinism has to presuppose an archetypal organism, then one can say of Goethe that he discovered the essential being of the archetypal organism. So what are we talking about with this archetypal organism and this typus? We're talking about the creative principle which forms every plant on one side. Goethe could see with his intuitive thinking. He could feel with his living soul and he could perceive with his uh, ideal formation power of sight. And he could recognize the way that this was connected with the sense manifestation of particular plant forms. He could see that there was a creative, formative life pulse that was present in the midst of every specific plant. And he referred to this as the herb plants or the archetypal plant. Likewise, uh, he became partially conscious of the formative creative life principle behind every uh, sense experience of an animal. And he referred to this as the typus. These are basically Greek words, the idea of the prototype, the formative principle. And these are invisible, super sensible aspects that one can perceive uh, with living, with living thinking with connecting our own life with the unfolding life that we perceive behind the scenes in plants and in animals. So notice the idea is that we're finding the being of the organism. So the being of any possible plant formation is in this, uh, is in this ideal plant and it's not made by looking at a lot of plants and then abstracting and drawing our imagination of what a any plant could look like based on what we've seen but rather the opposite that we find that in every movement of any particular plant leaf or root or blossom or seed or uh, or, or mold or fungus or mushroom that there is a uh, invisible, super sensible plant that we're able to actually merge with, with our uh, etheric organism. And we, in this merging, which is clairvoyant perception, we perceive this pulse, this uh, coherent uh, idea that has, uh, it's continually in motion, it's continually bursting forth and moving around in a harmonic harmonic motion and it is the formative principle of what we see with our eyes in sense perception okay so notice that it is um, a self-constituted principle an ontology so ontology is this aristotelian concept of the final form of any species but it's not uh it's not something that is gained through a linear development of sense perceptible organisms. Rather, it is the inspiration 
it's the ideal mother of every single plant formation and every animal that's perceived inside uh, as a as the formative principle, as the creative principle, as the nutritive form, which is uh, invisible, but it's becoming visible in the external world in time and in perception. So this can be in, intuited. Okay, notice that, but this, uh, the typus held fast in its intuitive form explains itself. Okay, so it doesn't just show up as a, as a form, it actually has a meaning element there as well. And this can be thought in intuitive grasping of pure meaning as it unfolds itself. So for example, if we look at good work that's been done on the Fibonacci mathematical series in the formation of plant forms, we can see that there's an approximation of an ideal mathematical sequence in these seed structures. And of course, you can see this in, uh, you can see this in a lot of different leaf arrangements. And notice it's always an approximation of an ideal form. The ideal broccoli and cauliflower and even cabbage uh, indicates this to a certain extent. Everyone's seen how the sunflower seeds arrange themselves in this particular beautiful sequence, which can be uh, understood mathematically, but it's not merely uh, a numerical relationship between quantities. It's also an outcome of this super sensible uh, etheric life harmony, which is pulsing and which is creative and which one can see and also understand the significance of. So it's also connected. It's not just a super sensible image. We're also penetrating with intuitive thinking. We're diving into the meaning forms of life. And when we dive into those, which are essentially concepts, pure concepts that are alive and moving in the concept plane, then the meaning, the, uh, the essential understanding of these plant formations comes about and we can recognize and interpret and organize our knowledge based on this intuitive thinking. So same thing we could do if we wanted to penetrate into the living nature of animals. So we find that behind all these moving sense experiences of the animals that we can uh, see that there is a creative uh, life and soul principle, which unfolds in all possible animal forms. And one can uh, not only find this living creative image in inner experience and in soul experience uh, and merge with it, which is what is required, the moral requirement for actually uh, entering into the soul world and the real intuitive experience. Uh, we can also uh, recognize the meaning, the, the conceptual understanding we find the concept. So we don't just find clairvoyant images, but as I mentioned before in previous videos, we actually uh, dive into the concept life, which unfolds itself behind the scenes. And this concept life is what uh, is expressing itself outwardly in time and space through the animals and the plants. Notice Steiner says also in uh, Gertian Science, a little bit later, this is in uh, chapter four. When now our spirit beholds the development of the typus in each particular form of manifestation, this form becomes comprehensible to it. This form appears to our spirit as one of the stages, one of the metamorphoses in which the typist realizes itself. And the nature of the systematics to be founded by Goethe was to consist in demonstrating these different stages. So he's showing this intuitive ideal perception where the spirit beholds the development uh, of this creative form behind all plants. It's almost like when you when you see this for the first time, when you merge with this, you're, it's almost like you're rewinding backwards from the sense experience back into the super sensible experience 
almost what happened uh, a year before or several years before. You're rewinding backward in time and you're seeing how this invisible life structure uh, has created this uh, current sensible form. So if we want to take this into anthroposophical, spiritual, scientific research, then as we're penetrating and seeing this uh, life principle, which forms all plants, and this experience is like going down into a cave, and we think that we've explored all of the stalactites and stalagmites and all the contours of the cave, this is like the sense world, but and then we kind of burst through to a new part of the cave and we see, oh, there's this lit up uh, life form here, which uh, produces all of the forms in the cave itself. And it is a, uh, it is a, uh, it has contours which can be described totally concretely, which can be uh, organized mathematically and understood logically. And then if we go one step further into spiritual scientific uh, intuition, then we penetrate to the pure meaning forms. And these pure meaning forms are, uh, are pure concepts that are intuitively and livingly grasped. And we find there that uh, we can also awaken then to the self-conscious I. So this is the elevation of something that Goethe was not able to recognize the awakening of the self-conscious I in the midst of concept land, in the midst of the concept ocean in which we're flowing at every minute. So once we see how the I uh, can clothe itself with these concept formations and recognize the spiritual nature of these pure meaning forms as they happen to us, as they think us, there's this uh, moral center where if we bring this all down to the heart into devotion, all of this uh, cognitive activity, then we find this moral threshold where if we're devoted to nature, if we're devoted to other human beings, we can uh, erase all these sensible forms, erase the typus, erase the archetypal plant, erase the meaning forms uh, that have to do with our personal and, and subjective approach to these, and we can patiently ask and wait for the spiritual world to show up in this empty space. We're still conscious, but we're waiting, and we know that we don't personally gain anything from this activity. We're waiting for the spiritual world to show itself in this uh, emptiness. And that's where the, the intentionality reverses and all of Husserl's projects about seeing ideas get turned on their heads. So we recognize that these archetypes are not frozen ideal forms that then uh, like prototypical molds in a factory that produce the exact identical form, rather they're also evolving and alive and at their heart, they are spiritual beings uh, where we are in thinking standing in the midst of a spiritual world with real spiritual beings there who are the ultimate content of our thinking. And they weave through us and we weave through them. They leave us free and open in this very subtle modern experience of thinking. But we can, once we bring this into the heart with devotion, we can find that there's this real monistic flow together that Steiner was indicating in the philosophy of freedom, where I am a world I thought by the spirit beings and also a human I, humble human I living on the earth, filled with moral character at every moment. So then I see that the, I find the real moral character in the animal world, in the uh, spiritual eyes of the animals, of the animals, the mothers of the animals. And I also find the creative spiritual beings that work in plants who create this uh, neutral form of the archetypal plant and who are really the mothers and fathers of the plant evolution. And here I can find the human eye. I remember myself and I can wait patiently for the appearance of my higher self uh, with the Christ influence, the, let's say the archetypal spiritual moral principle of my own eye 
It brings my own archetypal eye into creation and allows me to be an individual. So these are some of the aspects I wanted to talk about today. Um, I hope that you can apply them in your uh, own experience and have a good day. Thank you.